Well, it's good to see everybody today. I guess I can't really see you, but it's good to be together today um, on this uh, Thursday check-in. Um, we've been doing these ever since COVID-19 came into our community and forced us to kind of go online and adjust our lives and kind of some pretty dramatic ways. And so these check-ins have been a source of life for me and for uh, many of you. And so I know we've had kind of our faithful few who participated on Thursdays, and it's so good to be with you guys. I know many of you probably are listening later on, um, maybe on our podcast or watching on YouTube. Um, but for those of us who are here right now, it's really good to see you. I see Chris and Stacy, Christina um, gathering with us today, and I'm sure there's some others of you out there as well. Um, I'd love for you to let us know you're watching. Sometimes I don't know who's on here or not. So just say, hey, um, if you're if you're participating. And um, also, if you don't mind, sharing it um, helps because that can kind of remind other people that we do this. And, and who knows, somebody may be taking a little lunch break and want to tune in and connect. Um, my name is John Gallagher, and I'm the lead pastor uh, here at Embrace Church. And I am just grateful uh, to be together today. Um, it's been a uneasy past couple of days, and I know that at least our entire nation here and really across the world are waiting to see what happens in this presidential election, and um, it's, a, it's an important one, and there is a lot at stake here. Uh, many of my friends, uh, many folks in our community um, are, are nervous, are afraid. Uh, many folks feel like their lives are even somewhat on the line um, in this election as far as just you know, and, and also I see that, that it, it, this, is, this is very important, and, and I don't have a lot of words to say about all that today, um, and, and honestly, I've been, my mind has been very distracted, um, I've been very tired and just uh, struggling to stay focused the past couple of days, and maybe, maybe you guys feel the same way as well. And so what, what we decided to do today, instead of really trying to say some you know, brilliant, timely words today um, as we as we kind of in this nervous kind of waiting period. Um, we thought that it might be better just to worship and to pray a little bit. And so Felice Salmon, one of our uh, members at our church, has written these beautiful prayers that we've been using throughout this election season. And they've really helped me to stay grounded, to stay focused, to keep my eyes on Jesus, um, to be just reminded that 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 we worship a God who, who is always greater, always greater than any struggles and, and crises and issues and evil and, and all the things that we face. Our God is always greater. And so I've been reminded of that, but I've also been reminded of God's particular care and concern for those who suffer, for those who are struggling, for those that society has kind of rejected and pushed aside. Um, it's been a, these prayers have been a reminder for me to repent and to search my heart and to confess kind of all the brokenness that's within me, ways that I have been complicit in kind of the sin and the destructiveness in our world, um, ways that I have um, played a part in, in many of the, the evils of our society, the evils of racism, white supremacy, uh, hatred, um, just uh, so much that, 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 that I've been reminded that, that I need to continue to search my heart and to be willing to confess and acknowledge the ways that I am complicit in much of the evil in the world. And, and I want to walk in the light, as this scripture we're about to read says, and, and I, too, all too often I'm walking in darkness. And, and so we, we need to be honest, um, and, and these prayers have helped to guide me in that, in that journey over the last few weeks. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to pray through some sections of, of that, those prayers that Felice have shared um, and, and much of that was included in our litany that we shared on election day. And so I'm going to have the words on the screen. You can pray along where you're at, or you can just kind of listen to the words. And then we're also going to share some music um, and some scripture. And so Christina was going to be here with me in the office today, but something important came up and she had to, to head out and wasn't able to be here in the office with me today. And so she has recorded uh, herself singing uh, some songs uh, that I'm going to play for you all. And we're all just going to let these words wash over us and participate along. We were going to have words for you, but, you know, it's 2020 and you can't really 
uh, plans plans never really work out that well, uh, and so we don't have words for you today, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to kind of go through this together, and hopefully, we'll come out at the end feeling a little stronger, uh, feeling a little more courageous, uh, maybe feeling a little more hopeful, even um, that that we can get through this. And and there is work left to be done. There is lots and lots of work left to be done. Um, but we can't do it alone, and we certainly uh, need Jesus uh, to walk with us as we continue on this journey towards peace and justice and freedom uh, for all God's people. So um, I'm going to begin by just reading the scripture from 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-9. through 9. And like I said, I'll have a lot of this on the screen for you. Um, so 1 John 1, 5-9. through 9. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You know, I, uh, I desire to walk in the light, yet I often walk in darkness. As we press into prayer together, uh, we should begin today by bowing our hearts alongside our knees, humbling ourselves, and confessing the ways that we have walked in darkness. Because we are guilty. The church is guilty. Um, but there is, uh, there is a path to forgiveness, to restoration, and to freedom. And so let's pray these words together. From arrogance and misuse of power and voice, Deliver me, Jesus. From selfishness and self centeredness, deliver me, Jesus. From nationalism and unyielding political affiliations, deliver me, Jesus. From injustice and judgment of others, deliver me, Jesus. From anger and depression, deliver me, Jesus. Now let's enjoy uh, this song together that's called Deliver Me.
Amen. Well, I'm going to read these words from Matthew 25. And these words from Matthew 25 are so important. Um, it's, it's about Jesus kind of separating out um, the sheep and the goats. And, and, and he talks about what judgment is going to look like. Um, and the Bible's clear. There, there is judgment. There will be judgment. <laughs> and we're often scared of that. Um, but I want to remind you that we have a good judge. Uh, Jesus himself uh, says he's going to be the judge. And we got a lot of bad judges across our world. Um, our, our justice system is often not just at all. Um, but we've, we can be confident that we have a good judge. And, and we actually are told, Jesus tells us how he's going to judge us. And we would do well um, to listen. And so I'm going to read these words from Matthew chapter 25. Then the king said to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you look after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Amen. That's one of the most powerful uh, passages, I think, in the New Testament and a sobering reminder of what we need to be about as followers of Jesus. You know, what God requires of us is actually fairly simple, yet it's not easy, and we've failed many times. The church has failed many times. Knowing clearly what God requires, let us pray, seeking forgiveness and deliverance of our Lord. So let's pray this prayer together. From barriers to financial aid for people most impacted by the pandemic, deliver us, Jesus. From erosion of human rights and access to health care, deliver us, Jesus. From the separation of families, systemic oppression, marginalization, and unfair treatment of the poor, deliver us, Jesus. From greed and power that corrupts and twists the course of our nation, deliver us, Jesus. From the power struggles, conflicts, division, and hatred that have been escalating among our communities, deliver us, Jesus. Now let's, uh, let's enjoy this song. It's kind of a reimagining of a song that many of you probably know called the Battle Hymn of the Republic, but it turns a battle hymn into a song of peace and coming together. And so let's, let's enjoy and, and, and rest in these words. Your peace will make us one. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the You are speaking truth to power. You are laying down the sword. Replanting every vineyard till the brand new wine is poured. Your peace will make us one. I've seen Your gentle love is patient. You will never fade or tire. Your peace will make us one. And glory, glory,
Dismantling our empires till each one of us is free. Your peace will make us one. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Man, what a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, thank you, Christina, for sharing that with us. Um, I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 41. And it's a beautiful um, promise from God. And, and in many ways, we, we read this and, and we, we feel some of it as true, but we also recognize that much of the fulfillment of this prophecy has not come yet that um, we're waiting for the full um, expression and, and fulfillment uh, of what God has promised and been promising throughout Scripture. We're waiting for that day of the Lord, as Scripture talks about, um, when, when Christ will return and He'll set um, all this nonsense um, right. He will take the brokenness and make us whole. Uh, the sick will be healed. Every tear will be wiped away from every eye, and I long for that day. Um, but let's hear these words from Isaiah 41. Um, and let me pull this up on the screen here for us. Um, so encouraging. Chapter or 41, verses 10 through 13. See, or so, do not fear. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. I love that. I am the Lord who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. You know, over the last um, few weeks and particularly in the last couple of days, I've been thinking particularly of a lot of friends and, and just other uh, people that, that I know or people I don't know who are just terrified right now. Um, they're terrified of, of what another four years of the current administration might mean for them. Um, I'm thinking particularly of many of my immigrant friends, for people of color, for um, gay friends, uh, so many folks who have felt very targeted and, and very hated and, and, and have experienced uh, marginalization, marginalization and oppression. And, and these words from God um, 
I know they don't take away the pain. I know they don't take away everything. But it's just a reminder that God will grab you by your right hand and he's going to walk with you. And it's not going to be an easy journey. It's not over yet. We have so much work left to do. But God is going to take your right hand and he's going to walk with you. And he's going to tell you, don't be afraid. And and what powerful words uh, to hear today. And so... Um, with confidence in where our help and strength is found. Let us pray these words. That, that the power, let us pray that the power of the resurrection is unshakable in the face of struggle, pain, and those who wish us harm. Jesus, I trust in you. That we might believe that you dwell together with us in this moment of transition. Jesus, I trust in you that your presence and peace will go on with us as we struggle to march onward. Jesus, I trust in you. Let's continue to worship. Amen. We hear these words from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. 
Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. What powerful words from the prophet Isaiah. You know, we have been reminded today during this lunch hour about who God really is. God's ears are particularly attuned to hear the cries of those who struggle. God is there. God is here for us. God walks with us. So with that in mind, let us pray uh, these final uh, words of prayer. We pray that hope in you will provide us with the strength we need to walk the path towards justice. Jesus, we trust in you that your wisdom stretches beyond time and human agenda. Jesus, I trust in you, that it may be well with our souls, no matter what the days ahead bring. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us worship with uh, one more song before we end our time together. Yeah.
Amen. Well, thank you all for spending just a few moments with us today. I know we're a little bit over uh, our 30 minute kind of time limit we have for these, but I wanted to make sure we got through it all and we're able to really just spend some time in God's presence. It's been encouraging to me and I hope it was to you. Um, I want to give you an opportunity um, if anybody has any prayer request um, to share those now. Um, I'll wait just a few seconds and see if you guys have anything to share. I do see that my friend Zadie um, would like prayer for her sister-in-law in North Carolina um, whose husband has dementia and I know that um, that can be uh, such a difficult uh, journey and road to walk down with a spouse or a friend or a loved one. And so, Zadie, we, we pray over your sister-in-law. Um, we pray over uh, her husband, and we just pray for peace um, in that situation. And we pray that, that Christ would be present, that Christ would walk with her um, as she cares for her husband um, in this difficult kind of season of their life, that you would, God would lift up her, her head and, and give her strength um, to soar like an eagle, as the scripture says, give her strength to overcome and to continue to press forward in the midst of great struggle. And we also pray for just rest and healing in that situation. Um, if anybody else has any prayer requests, I'll just give us a f few more seconds here to see if anybody has anything. Um, I will go ahead and say that I've known... Um, Quite a fit of folks. Um, yeah, Charlotte mentions, I'll go ahead and mention this. She said so many family situations here in Flemingsburg where she's moved now. Uh, COVID, the election, illness. Um, please continue to pray for everyone. And, and I um, will definitely be praying, Charlotte, um, over all those situations in Flemingsburg. We pray, Lord, for a special just um, touch of your power and your strength over the town of Flemingsburg and over Charlotte as she's dealing with all these different things that are causing her probably some stress, that God, you would just be there, uh, that you would support her, and that God, you would help um, just for your power to be evident and, and your healing touch to be evident in the lives of the folks there in Flemingsburg, just a, a little bit up the road from us here in Lexington. Um, I would also like to share that I've actually had quite a few folks that I know personally who have tested positive for COVID in the last week. And so we want to make sure to be lifting them up in prayer. This illness um, is it's no joke. Um, it is serious and it is affecting lives. Um, I know many people get it and don't have any symptoms at all. And for those folks, it can still be very disrupting of their lives, of their families, of their work. And it can cause financial issues for them, um, a lot of anxiety and stress and worry. And that's true for those with mild symptoms as well. But we also know that there are many folks who um, experience very significant symptoms. And, and COVID has also taken um, hundreds of thousands of lives um, in our nation and even more across our world. And so we pray for wisdom. We pray for courageous leadership. Um, we pray that all of us um, in Lexington and beyond could do our part uh, to make sure that, that this doesn't continue to spread um, and that, that we can all come together and really think of others above ourselves um, and play our part and do what we got to do um, to get this virus under control. So we pray, God, just wisdom and, and all that over this situation. Um, and so... Um, I'm just praying over all these things. Y'all pray along with me, and let's continue to lift each other up this week. Um, looks like we'll probably be in the red zone um, this coming Sunday in Fayette County, meaning that the infection rate is pretty high in Fayette County. And, and just the reality that I've known multiple people from our community that have had COVID, um, we're going to try to continue to be safe. We don't want to be spreading this around to people within our church. We don't want people to get sick, and God forbid anybody would, would get really sick um, in our community. And so uh, we will likely just be online on Sunday, but we'll be making an announcement about that on Saturday. So just be looking out for that. So good to see you all. Um, I see uh, Larry Epley tuning in from out of state. That's awesome. Rick, good to see you're connecting with us. And Charlotte, good to have you and Zadie and all the folks, Chris and Christina. And, and I know there's others as well and Aaron. And so good to see each of you today. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. I'll be here Sunday 
Um, I'm excited to dig in and to really wrestle with what God might be speaking to us in this very um, interesting and difficult um, season that we're in. And I think that our study in Thessalonians has a lot to say for us. And I'm excited to to process that uh, with my community uh, this coming Sunday. So I love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything, but we'll, we'll see you on Sunday.